Welcome back. Well, it's been another brutally hot day here today. So I'm going to try to do this with the air conditioning on. Um, if this turns out to be, you know, an intolerable amount of background noise, please let me know and I'll see about doing something else. Usually what I do as we get further along into the summer is I turn the air conditioning on, let the room chill down to about 50 degrees, then I turn it off, then I film, then we're in business, but I didn't have the foresight to do that today. So thank you for bearing with me. All right, more Bedford shopping when we come back. So the last time I was at Bedford, oh, by the way, I have a cat crawling all, no, I was going to say crawling all around my feet. He is now sitting here with his paws up on my knee, trying to get into my lap, but we'll see how well he makes it. Ordinarily, when I go into Bedford, I go to the second floor first, pass by Janine's booth, don't attack the light. Um, that's him, not you. Okay, here we go. All right, so say hello. Um, I usually go up to the second floor and I pass by Janine's booth first. And I didn't, I started uh, this past time on the first floor because I've been running out of time. And as a consequence, there are a lot of things I haven't shown you on the first floor. So I got to Janine's booth toward the end. Um, nevertheless, as always, I managed to find something worth picking up there. So let's take a look. Back to Janine's booth again. And just when I was thinking I was going to leave empty handed, I found this. This is a wonderful little glass dresser jar, $5 unmarked nice heavy piece. I'm going to take this. I find I use things like this in my own home all the time. Um, just wonderful little lidded containers. So it occurred to me that someone else might like that. That's coming with me. And then the booth across the aisle from Janine's I found this sugar and creamer eight dollars this is a wonderful blue glass sort of cobalt blue I'm going to call it depression glass even though it doesn't really meet the, the classical um, definition of depression glass I'm not seeing marks on it. What I am seeing is this wonderful, let's see if I can get that for you, this wonderful chevron design. And the chevron design and the cobalt blue is very Art Deco. So I'm taking that with me. That little powder jar was really nice and I find a lot of uses for things like that. Interestingly enough, my first thought when I saw it was, you know, I bet this would actually make a really nice little refrigerator dish. Not intended for it, but it would work. You could throw your berries or your leftovers or whatever, drop the lid on it. You know, before Tupperware, um, and before Cool Whip containers. That's what everybody used to do back in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Um, Tupperware really started making a big splash in the 60s uh, along with Cool Whip. They gave us free containers. But prior to that, if you wanted to store leftovers in your refrigerator, you would ordinarily wrap them in wax paper, 
or use glass refrigerator jars. So little um, powder jars like that can be used for all kinds of things. So I thought that was cute. Glad to get it. Um, the other set, the Art Deco um, Depression Glass Cobalt Blue Sugar and Creamer. I wanted to explain the reason that I said that was not typical Depression Glass Cat's Back is mostly because of the color. Now, depression glass, as, as we tend to recognize it, is usually in pinks, greens, and yellows, and often has a floral pattern on it. But this one, blue, now mind you, there is some blue depression glass, well, that sugar and creamer, for example, but it's not a common color. Um, and that particular piece, was just a little atypical. For me, as a reseller, that's good. Because first of all, it's Art Deco, and you know my theory on Art Deco, Art Deco sells. But also because unusual pieces tend to sell more quickly than ordinary pieces. So I was absolutely delighted to get that. And then I went back over to that booth across the aisle where I had picked that up. It had just been sitting right on the aisle, so I couldn't miss it. But then I went back in, went through the booth to see what else they had, and they did have an interesting little find. So let's take a look at that. This is the booth that I got the little cobalt blue sugar and creamer from and I was prowling through their cabinets and found this nice little Toby jug, $6, made in Japan, cute little piece. Uh, this is coming home with me. People like these little pictures. I don't blame them. I like these little pictures, too. They are just cute little things that are incredibly useful. And once again, as I said in a previous video, you gotta have stuff. Why not have really cute, interesting stuff? So those little Toby jugs were actually, this was just a wildly popular little um, uh, sort of style. They were mugs, they were jugs, they were pitchers, and they had these fat little guys. And um, and I believe it came from Sir Toby Belch from Shakespeare. That I believe that's how they were named, Toby Jugs. But they were very, very popular. And they are still very popular. It was a traditional style of sort of, of British porcelain. Uh, the Japanese managed to copy everybody's styles and did it relatively inexpensively, also produced a lot of pieces in this style. Little creamers like this, um, they're, they're cute, they sell, they're adorable. Um, I sold a little creamer, and, and I love to tell this story, because a grandmother bought it. It was a little... Uh, Native American head, uh, a little Indian chief, and she uses it for the cereal milk for her grandson. And I think that's the most delightful thing in the world because she's not just letting the kid pour his own milk on his cereal, which I'm sure is a remarkably big deal to a four-year-old, but, you know, it's creating memories. I like to think that that little creamer that she got will eventually go to that little boy's grandchildren and make a whole new generation of memories. But little creamers like that are just tremendous fun. And especially if you find images that appeal to children, they can start pouring their own milk on their cereal. So I thought that was just cute as the Dickens, and I was very glad to have it. Next up, 
back to the front of the store. This is an area near the register. So let's see what I found there. So let's take a look at this piece. Mid-century plastic. Uh, $10 creamer, sugar, and six salt and peppers. I think that's a good deal for 10 bucks. And so that is coming with me because there are plenty of mid-century modern collectors out there and plenty of people who like a little red accent for their kitchen. So taking that. In general, I tend to shy away from plastic pieces in part because most of the plastics produced in the mid-century tended to uh, age out. They developed a pattern of the whites turn cream and the original look of that, that shock red against the shock white is kind of lost through the ages. Uh, I think it's very attractive, but Plastic items are not ordinarily my thing. This particular set I thought was really nice because yes, it's so mid-century, very typical. This is the sort of thing you saw on everybody's kitchen table and finding pieces in really good condition is nice. Also, there were a lot of salt and pepper shakers with that. There were like six salt and pepper shakers with this set. I only think that four of the salt and peppers actually go with the set. I think the other two are merely similar and were thrown in. Um, nice set. Again, glad to get it. $10. It was at the top of my little self-imposed price limit. But still, I, I get mid-century pieces when I can because it's very popular and because it's hard to get them in really good condition. So once again, glad to get that. Uh, same area, and this was right next to the sugar and creamer set, found something else very mid-century. I did not get it because it was just a touch over my little self-imposed $10 limit, but I thought you might like to see it anyway. Then, oh, let me show you this. Here at Bedford, I don't know if you can see, right there is a cooler with soda. How nice is that? $12 for this. A wall-hung wax paper dispenser. Now, I know people don't use wax paper anymore. I'm giving some serious thought to this, mostly because it's such a great mid-century piece. So, again, over my price limit, but I'm thinking about it. So, a wax paper dispenser. I mean, is that like a sign of the times or what? I don't know if anybody uses wax paper anymore. That was a thing. I can remember being a little kid and my mother would pack my school lunch up and she would wrap the sandwich in wax paper and it was just so delightful. And I'm not quite sure what the virtue of waxing the paper was. I don't know why that was better than any other kind of paper. Certainly we thought it was for food storage and it was heavily used. It's still used today in butcher shops. So it's still out there. But I thought that was just a real blast from the past. And I have to say, when I was a kid, I would just take my fingernail and scrape the wax off the paper or draw uh, pictures into the wax. I had fun with it. I know. I was a bored child. Uh, and boring. I'm boring. What kind of little kid does that? All right, we'll get away from that. Um, anyway, that stayed behind. But the reason I wanted you to see it was that little floral decoration on the front. So 
mid-century. That was just ubiquitous. The, the red, the white, the little flowers, that was absolutely everywhere. And you would just hang that on your wall. It was, you know, functional art, really. But that stayed behind. If it's still there, I'm still going to think about it. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but in that same case, I did find something else interesting. Okay. Same case. Right in here, we have two little babies. Uh, this is $40. I believe they are salt and pepper shakers, but I can't tell. Um, nice piece of uh, black Americana collectible. Uh, price is a little high. If it were a little less, I would probably grab it. But $40, now mind you, I'm not saying it's not worth it, because these are rare pieces. But if I were to pick something like this up, I probably could not put it out of my shop, just fees, packing, shipping, for under 50 and it would probably sit there a while. But I did want to show you a nice, unusual piece of Black Americana. And if you look at this, it's not a disrespectful piece, it's just a couple of cute little babies. Yes, these were just wonderful little um, Black Americana babies. Um, just remarkably cute little things. Uh, I think they, they were salt and pepper shakers. I'm just not really sure. Um, the price was what I wanted you to see. Rare Black Americana pieces in good condition really go for a lot of money. Um, it, that makes that makes it difficult for collectors, of course, because usually when they there there are unusual pieces out there, interesting pieces, things they would like to add to their collections, that they can become ridiculously pricey. As resellers, of course, the lesson we take from that absolutely is. If you find pieces like this, if they are in good condition, you can put a very significant markup on them because that is what the market will bear. And I probably shouldn't advocate that because ideally I would like to see these things in the hands of collectors and I don't want to see them sort of priced out of the, the pocketbooks of the dedicated collectors. I'd rather see them you know, in, in people's homes where they would be appreciated, where they would be part of collections, rather than sitting unsold on shelves. But nonetheless, it is a legitimate market. Certainly, there is uh, room for us as resellers in that market. So that's what we have today. Um, I am hopeful that we will be able to finish up this last Bedford trip tomorrow and with any luck at all, we will have a dry weekend so we can get back to Project Sunday as usual. In the meantime, we are going to take a look at a nice quiet little Zen slideshow as we move out. Have a terrific day. I will see you all tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure. I think we'll do some flowers today. How about that? All right. See you all later.